Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And this is unique. This is special. This is our very first show that we've done uh, in conjunction with uh, someone. Now we're in Birmingham in the UK, John Godbull from Tales of the Second City. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. A um, well, this... little bit bleary eyed from a late night last night, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm all right. No, it's, exci it's exciting because it's our first kind of uh, a show where we have a co-host. And so I'm going to kind of get things started, but um, we're producing this here together with John, who runs uh, Tales of the Second City. And we are, and we are with uh, Beth and Cameron from Birmingham, and they do, they're from a, an organization, Kings and Things, and they are drag kings in Birmingham. How are you both? We're very well, thank you. Very good. Having a lovely Monday morning. I love this. You know, you're just uh, FYI, we've, uh, I've interviewed a few drag queens, but you are our very first drag kings that we've had on the show. Oh, wow. Wonderful. <laughs> that feels like an achievement. Thank it's you nice. very much for having us. But no, it's exciting, especially from the outside, you know, outside of the UK, as, as well as just even um, those that are outside of Birmingham. Um, but you're, you perform, uh, I've looked, I've seen you uh, through your Facebook page and so forth, but you, you, you both do a, an amazing drag cabaret. I know Sunday nights are one of them um, at the Fox and that's in Kent Street, which I guess is the center and the kind of the heart of LGBT life there in Birmingham. Well, um, Birmingham is absolutely overflowing with drag shows and, um, you know, gay venues that will, well, I mean, queer venues that will happily host a number of different kind of cabarets and um, variety shows. But uh, we specifically like the Fox because it is a very, um it's a it's a it's a small venue but it's yeah. filled with a lot of heart you can get a lot of crowds in there and when you get the whole crowd going yeah. it's you know it's just as good as any club in my opinion yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. as well as the community space as well i think for us yeah it's really important to have uh, these kind of shows in safe spaces as well because when you're representing you know a, a kind of underrepresented uh, part of the yeah. queer community yeah. It's important to host that in a space where people feel comfortable enough to maybe come there and try it themselves. For sure. Um, it's interesting you mentioned the audience. One of the things I actually love about the performances is, of course, what's going on on stage. But actually, I just look around the space and it, it absolutely inspires me. It's such a diverse audience, isn't it? Yeah, oh. no, truly. Um, you'll have, you know, people who are just kind of starting out drag and want to just, you know, see what it's about. And then you'll have, you know, queers who have been on the scene for absolutely years that will come up to us and be like you're the first drag kings we've seen and we absolutely love it and yeah. that's the kind of special moments where you can look at the crowd and go we're doing something right here like there's something that's palatable to everyone that we've managed to achieve sure. in this show yeah so you know, if I if I talk about um the kings and things uh, shows and I do tell a lot of people about them. I think they're, they're brilliant and inspirational um, the term I use the most is avant-garde. Um, how do you explain them, um, them to people? Um, I mean, avant-garde makes us sound very sophisticated. <laughs> Some of the silliness that I do is, is not avant-garde. I've got a number where I dress up as Shrek and part of the shock factor of that number is eating a raw onion live on stage. Like, it's not avant-garde. Well, is it avant-garde? Like, yeah. Oh, you're making me question it now. <laughs> Good. Um, I, mean, I, I think, some, I think some of the actors are quite challenging as well, actually. They challenge perspective and uh, perception. Um, last night, there was, there was one performer um, who's who a wheelchair user, who then yeah. brought yeah. on death. The figure of death came to the back of the audience. You don't see that at many drag shows. <laughs> absolutely i mean to be uh, uh, for context a lot of what people understand about drag at the moment is given to them by a certain show that yeah. a lot of people watch um and unfortunately the drag that we do and that we like isn't represented in a lot of what the mainstream is. So to have Kings and Things be the place where, you know, one week, you know, one month we could be doing a ballad and the next week we could be like, you know, eating tins of beans. Yeah, no, <laughs> chugging, chugging tins of beans on the stage, you know, it's, 
it's important to show people that drag can be literally anything that you want it to be. It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be you choreographed you know some of the best performances that I've seen have had moments of improvisation that weren't meant to happen but made it that extra special kind of thing so I guess in the umbrella term of avant-garde being something out of the ordinary and something yeah and we, I mean when we started the show we've we've always wanted it to be the kind of the voice for the underrepresented that was the whole point yeah um yeah. The first really year of the, sorry, which is I was just saying that that really does come across actually in the performance. Yeah, the first year that um, we were performing at the Fox, we uh, had this had this like plan plan kind of. Uh, running order that we wanted and how many performers we wanted and it was all really exciting and we wanted to try and fit as many people as we could in because we were like there are so many people that we know that haven't performed yet that we could do this but obviously at that time we were brand new on the scene we had a little budget, tidy, because, tidy little budget. yeah a tidy tidy little budget and for the first year of it we didn't pay because we wanted to make sure that the people that we were booking were getting a little bit closer to what we thought they deserved because we couldn't give people what we, you know, what, what the money, yeah, the, money. the understanding of what a good amount of money is for a drag performance, you know what I mean? Um, so over the three years, we've worked really hard to make sure that everyone's treated equally when they come perform with us. You know, we don't get paid more than anyone else. No. Um, you know, sometimes we get paid less than other people because <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll pay for people's travel to come from Manchester or something like that. And it's important to put out good things into the community rather than like see it as a, oh, we've got a show, you know, do you know what I mean? It's not something to brag about. It's something to continue working hard oh, at. Sure. Yeah. So last night was your third anniversary, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, it was. Did you do you have a special celebration afterwards? Or before? Um, sort <laughs> of. <laughs> I mean, for context, uh, last night's show, we swapped drag personas. And part of that is an in-joke from the many years that we've been doing drag now, where for some reason people can't tell the difference between us. <laughs> we get confused a lot. Um, and I think it's partly just that thing of like, oh, you know, the king, that one. Like, oh, yeah, I saw a drag king the other week, so you must be that drag king. Do you know oh, what I mean? Like, okay. um, and so that was a little little nod to that. Um, and the fact that it was an entirely king show as well. Mm. Well, I mean, that's not special. It's it's always been for like not queens. Essentially, we have had queens on the show and and stuff, but. You know, it's always been to fit a theme or something like that. And we always make sure that, you know, it's kind of, yeah, like one queen. <laughs> the majority of our performers are not the kind of the mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well swapping the names over certainly confused me last night because I came up to you, didn't I, Beth? I went, oh, I'm really sorry. I, I, I thought your character was Christian Grey. Yeah, and you're like, no, hang on. Knowing full well <laughs> we'd be doing it today, I thought, oh, I've got my research completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a good thing we didn't change the colour of the little stripes oh, yeah. that we've got because then it would have completely thrown everyone off. Oh, you're you're like Ant and Deck, aren't you? You've got to stand on the same side as each other so people don't get confused. <laughs> you can know who you are. You're the Ant and Deck of Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> I Deck will take that. Birmingham gay scene. <laughs> oh, fully. We've done. Let's get ready to rumble as well. <laughs> um, can I just ask you about your drag personas? Uh, how did they come about, and, and how have they evolved over the three years? I mean, you have more of an origin story than me, I suppose. Okay, I started drag in uh, 2017 with a burlesque group in Leicester because um, I was a bartender at the venue that they used to do their shows at and just got a really good rapport with them and stuff. And after one too many tequilas, they were like, oh, you should, you should come do a show one day. And I was like, the only way you'd get me to do that is if I could do it in drag. And they were like, yeah go on then <laughs> um, so originally it was just a, a 
bucket list idea thing that I wanted to do one time just to say, oh, I've done this thing. Um, and the show was a, uh, it was like a movie themed show. And at that time, Fifty Shades of Grey had just come out. So um, one of the girls that I was partnered with um, agreed to do this like number with me, this Fifty Shades of Grey number. Um, and purely for the fact that I thought I was going to do it the one time, I called myself Christian Gay. <laughs> and five years later, it's it's still, still Christian Gay. <laughs> um, but after it's that, it's such a good I, name. It's, a, it's, it's such a good name. I'm amazed no one had jumped in there first. It's 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 perfect. I think it's um, for me. It's a very good representation of my drag because it's this like meant to be suave character with just that little bit of silliness in just a little bit of stupid like that's very much my character um but over the kind of 2018 to 2020 period I'd done a couple of competitions in Birmingham and there weren't any kind of like performing kings on the scene at that time if there were kings they were kind of just doing makeup at home or something like that um and I got to the finale in uh, 2018 of Church of Waishi's competition, which um, is a competition for any any drag to enter. Um, they host weekly heats, and then there's a semi-final, and then there's a finale. They can win a grand. It's an amazing competition, and it gives so much opportunity and oh, experience yeah. to people. Like, we'll, we'll always big up Waishi for that competition. But I got to the finale, um, and from there I just kind of slowly started getting booked in Birmingham and like once people kind of started recognizing my drag a bit more that's when we approached um Andy at the Fox well I say we uh, like there is origin the coming as well that will fill that <laughs> okay. in but yeah basically then we got the the gig at the Fox and um from there it's just kind of been exploring how far I can go in a performance in drag because I see Beth and Christian as very much like different people. Christian to me is like my superhero who I can jump into and I can escape the real world and be ridiculous and get celebrated for it. So that's that's where he is. And Cam, <laughs> I was gonna say it makes much more sense make any sense um, and so at that finale of the church why she competition in 2018 yeah um uh me and my partner at the time went to to see that show because we were like oh this is gonna be great we were just starting to like go out in the Birmingham scene and kind of meet a few drag people and we really loved it um we were like oh that's gonna be great we'll get to see loads of people and we were like uh astounded when there was suddenly a king on stage and we were like oh my god oh my god like because we'd, we'd seen a bunch of drag kings on instagram and we'd gone to london a couple of times to see specific king shows but there hadn't been anything outside of london that we'd seen really um so we we got to this final and saw christian on stage uh doing his thing and i was like that's so cool i want to start doing this like this looks like so much fun um and basically we just started turning up places until we became friends with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in a competition um, uh, that was like weekly at that time. And um, from like this, I was in it for 10 weeks. And from the second week to the, to the, to, to, to the 10th, um, they came every single week and, you know. We he, just got on a castle fire. Yeah, he just, he just instantly became my best friend. Yeah. And, that's when we kind of identified the very big lack of diversity in the yeah. shows at Birmingham at that time. Yeah. And just... Because I was like, how do I start in drag? Like, I want to give it a go. And you were like, essentially like, I don't know, there's nowhere around here that books kings. Yeah. Um, so then the, the idea came from that, that we should... Well, we're like, you know, if, if there's nowhere doing it, why don't we make a place that does it? And so my very first performance in drag was at our residency at the Fox because we just went, yes, we're all drag kings. Mm -hmm. We've performed before. <laughs> Give us the space. <laughs> like, and and that's the best way to get any job. Just say, yeah, I've got a load of experience and go for it. 
<laughs> yeah. It's probably um, a good step over the years. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to have worked out quite well. <laughs> yeah, you've done loads of really cool stuff since, haven't you? You've done... Yeah. Um, I mean, you were in the same show as Tea Coffee. Uh, oh, from Mother's Meeting. Yeah. yeah. Another one of the excellent shows in Birmingham that we will always hype up. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, I think my drag persona has always been a bit more like, you know, gentlemanly than Christian. <laughs> I will agree to that. I think I've always been a bit more of a theatre kid. My drag tends to be a little less um, messy. Yes, <laughs> I was going to try and describe that nicer for you, but messy works. <laughs> um, so, so we've, we've talked about the origins of uh, Kings and Things, and we've discussed where you are now at, at three years in. What's the plan for the future? Where do, you, where do you see this going? Well, Kings and Things is a format that we could pretty much take anywhere if they wanted it. Yeah. Um, we do have a show at The Loft, Yes, we do. What date? Uh, oh, the, uh, May the 12th? <laughs> Question I think, mark. I think it's May the 12th. Um, there is another queer venue in Birmingham called The Loft that does, um, on a Thursday night, they do like a kind of cabaret. It's it's like a brunch, but at night time, I suppose. <laughs> like like a dinner cabaret sort of thing. Um, and the, the lovely manager of The Loft has asked Kings and Things to do like a little takeover for that night. Um, yeah, they do very good food at the loft as well, so good night all round. They do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if if there was ever an opportunity where someone approached us and said, hi, we want you to put on a show, it's an hour and a half, we would fully be able to just be like, yep, yeah, we've got it. And not even just in the style of like, oh, the three of us will come up and do a couple of numbers. If If it's like, you know, more of like a, a Hindu crowd or something. We've got party games and, yeah. you know, the lip sync for your liquor game that we play is transferable across any, any show because yeah, for sure. it's just something that is silly and everyone has fun doing. Um, yeah. You, you did an I Easter egg hunt last night. Yes. <laughs> we did do an Easter egg hunt last night. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I think, something we've briefly discussed in the past but would love to do is like we'd love to do a little tour of like taking kings of things on the road oh yeah like we'd love to go around a few different cities in the uk and you know do a kings of things elsewhere but achieving that is going to take some logistics <laughs> for sure i mean we the thing i, I i'm very much going to speak from the heart for a sure, moment no we have worked hard in so many different ways over the years because it's not just doing the shows at the fox once a month it's like when the lockdown happened you have to be able to maintain your your you know your drag brand your your yeah. your you know your essence of your drag digitally somehow so victor over lockdown became an absolute tech wizard <laughs> and you know was a on it with the video editing and making sure it was captioned so it was still accessible so we were still staying true to what we want from yeah. drag shows and you know we created this um silly taskmaster spin-off um called kings and things school for drags with very specific talents um where we got drag people that we knew to do a bunch of silly tasks that we had given that that we hand, hand wrote, and hand hand wrote wax sealed given them sent into the post um and you know put together a, a taskmaster style show where the audience could also pay pal a pound to vote for their favorites and all of the money from that was split between all of the people that competed in it um and it's always about adapting to what what what's the next thing what yeah. you know we could do a, a drag king competition in Birmingham because again London has a lot of a, a lot of scene and a lot of competition oh, yeah. for anyone to enter really but London's also a very far away place so a, a, a specific kings and things kind of competition or something like yeah, that would be fun thought about doing for a long time, yeah. yeah well what you've achieved in the last three years is brilliant um, and original and inspirational. Um, and thanks for coming along to 
to share uh, some of your story with us. Um, I also love looking around that space on a Sunday night and thinking, this is everything the Daily Mail readers would hate. Oh, I yes. Love it. <laughs> I love it. It's the best review of Kings and Things I've ever heard. Can we please put that in the bio on Instagram? Oh, absolutely, yeah. 100% that's becoming part of the tagline now. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, I want commission. <laughs> oh, I mean, 50p is what our budget would allow in commission. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, bag of peanuts. I'm going to get that with that. And, and a shot. <laughs> Oh, and a shot always. Yeah. Oh, and a shot. There you go. <laughs> I, th Perfect. I think you all are amazing. I, I really can't wait until uh, I, I do travel to the UK quite often. I haven't been there, obviously, for a couple of years uh, every, with all the shutdowns. But um, I, next time I'm out there, and I've been to London, I've been to Manchester and so forth, but I've never been to Birmingham yet. So now I have a very strong incentive and reason to get there. Oh, man. Sundays are where it's at in Birmingham. It's Drag Central. And um, yeah. we'll give John some dates for the yeah. future so that you can plan around that <laughs> i love this but i no i would just say thank you again uh, reiterating what john said thank you so much for kind of sharing a bit of your story and uh i very much look forward to being able to connect in the real world soon thank you very thank much you. it was so nice talking to you both yeah absolutely. absolutely thanks for being here and we'll see you soon bye see you. So good.